All right, Amanda, we're back. Uh, this is the Q&A session for Understanding PEOs, the webinar we presented on June 17th, and we're actually back in the office. So Amanda, it's very nice to see you. Let's make sure we keep our six feet while we, while we do this. Um, but I just want to thank everybody again for tuning into the webinar. Uh, we had a lot of great questions. We actually had to reach out to quite a few people to get the answers. Um, and, and get them cleared up. We're also going to provide this in a written format uh, for everybody else out there. So thank you very much and let's get going. Yeah, I'm ready Tom, let's do it. Cool. All right, so the next question is from Joseph Rosenberg and he has an individual client who's actually worked at two companies that use the same national PEO and his W-2 shows excess FICA withheld that the PEO says is handled correctly. Uh, another PEO that he has said they would have capped the FICA at its max. So should there be a difference in application of tax law by different PEOs? Should there be a difference in the application of tax law by different PEOs? Probably not. But in reality, does that happen? Absolutely. We see it here with payroll tax restarts. We see it in the differences in how PEOs manage state unemployment tax. We see it in how PEOs manage the Section 125 credit for, for their worksite employees. So, you know, the PEOs are all looking at taxes and applying it a little bit differently from each other. Um, in this case, you have a, an employee who worked at two companies so, and, and he paid excess Social Security. Now, if that happens, just like if you start working at two, two, two companies that are not using a PEO, that employee should be able to get a credit back for the excess Social Security tax that they've paid. Um, okay, but there is no process that I know of with a PEO where for a new hire, they're going to ask how much Social Security has been withheld for that employee throughout this year and carry it forward. Now, I think a really big spin-off of this question is, what if it was a new company? So if a, new com if a company uh, knocked on a PEO's door and decided to work with them in June, uh, would everybody's payroll taxes restart? And the answer is probably not. If you're using an IRS uh, certified PEO, there would be a process where that PEO would uh, collect documentation, most likely a payroll report, that shows what that company has paid and what those employees have paid towards their payroll taxes, and they would pick up those taxes at that point and carry it forward and cut them off at the appropriate size, uh, the, the appropriate amount. So to clarify, for an employer starting with the PEO mid-year, there should be no payroll tax restarts if that PEO is IRS certified. Uh, for the employee or the new hire joining a new company mid-year, I don't know of a process where uh, they would not withhold those taxes, but the employee should be able to get that on their tax return. Um, All right, so our next question is from Linda Neenan uh, from the Nova Southeastern University in Florida. So her question is, we have a few employees in different countries. Should we use a PEO if we don't want to register in that country? Uh, so the answer to that is, is absolutely utilize what's considered a global PEO provider. So it's actually a very hot topic. We work with a few global PEOs ourselves and help our clients uh, shop and compare. And, you know, the great thing about working with a global provider is that you don't need to establish any kind of entity in that country or open any bank accounts within that country. So the global PEO will take care of all of that for you um, and it makes it a lot easier. So yes, utilize a global PEO. All right, so the next question is from David Galinsky from Galinsky and Satanovitz out of Ohio. In some business tax software, we are asked to input number of employee W-2s issued as part of the taxpayer authentication for e-file. How does this work if a client uses the PEO? The client says they issued 10 W-2s because they have 10 employees. Is that an issue since it's not the client's FEIN used on those W-2s? So we get this question a lot. It's essentially, if I work with a PEO and I co-employ with a PEO, do we technically have employees? And the answer is yes. You are still the common law employer when you work with a PEO. Thankfully, the government now recognizes the co-employed relationship and what PEOs are. 
So you will list that you do have employees on your tax return. Now, um, some clients will line item all of their pass-through overhead, such as federal payroll taxes, workers' comp benefits, on their tax returns in separate line items. Others, including ourselves, will just lump it together in leased employees, which covers all of the overhead. Um, so great question, but yes, if you work with the PDO, you do have P you do have employees. All right, so our next question is from David Galinsky. Uh, should clients consider themselves to have zero employees since the employer of record is the PEO? Uh, okay, um, yes. If you are using a PEO and you're co-employed, you are still the common law employer. So yes, you do have employees. Um, the government recognizes the co-employed relationship. Thankfully, the IRS certification is out there, cleared a lot of it up. Um, but yes, you still have employees, even though they are, um, you know, the payroll taxes being filed through the PEO's FEIN. Okay, so our next question is from Sherry Figaro. So Sherry would like to know, how are the wages classified for the company using a PEO and does it unqualify the company for 199A deduction calculations that actually depend on wages? Okay, awesome. An easy one, a softball. So the question is, does using a PEO unqualify you for the 199A tax deduction, uh, which is otherwise known as the pass-through entity, part of the 2017 or 18 tax law change? Thankfully, uh, the PEO industry was all over this. NAPIO came out almost immediately um, with the conclusion that if you use the PEO, you are not going to be hurt uh, from the standpoint of can you still use that pass-through entity tax deduction. Uh, also, some of the larger PEOs were, were all over that as well, as it would have been a, a really big problem for PEO clients. Um, so thankfully, the answer is, is, is no, it does not unqualify you. Feel free to use a PEO and still consider yourself a pass-through entity. All right, man, we got another one from David Kalinsky. If my client has employees in several states, will the PEO register them as employers in those states and set up unemployment accounts, or does the client use the PEO's registration? So Dave's got a lot of great questions he here. Does. So state unemployment is, is definitely an interesting topic. So it's really going to depend upon the state that you're located in, as well as the PEO that you're partnering with. So in certain states, the PEO registers those employees under their own FEIN number in that state. However, in some states require the client to register under their own FEIN number. But in either case, the PEO is actually gonna manage this for their client. So they don't have to worry about setting it up, but whether it's under their FEIN number or under the PEO's FEIN number is gonna depend upon that individual state and the PEO that they're using. Yeah, they're, 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 it's, it's, the list is growing, but I think at this point there's about 35 client reporting states where the PEO is gonna use the client's own ID number. Um, and then there are the remaining states, they're going to file it under their own um, you know, state tax ID number, like New York is, is what we do here. Thanks, David. Okay. All right, man. We got another one from David Galinsky out of Ohio. Are you ready? Yeah, let's All hear right. it. All right. So, does the PEO handle the annual medical open enrollment process? So, David, yes, they absolutely handle this process. So, depending on the PEO, is going to depend on when this actual open enrollment happens. But the PEO is going to meet with all of the employees during this open enrollment period. They're going to explain any kind of changes that have happened in the plan structures and make recommendations to the employees and which plans that they should elect in and answer any questions that the employees have about their elections. Um, so yes, absolutely, the PEO is gonna manage these open enrollments. And in a COVID, a COVID world where they can't meet with the employees, it's gonna be all online, all webinars. So, so if you want the PEO to be there in person, they can do that. We see that a lot with like manufacturing firms, stuff like that. Um, but if your employees are comfortable just doing it remotely, uh, that is absolutely an option. Thanks, Dave. All right, Tom, so the last question from David, he wants to know if his client has remote 
an A remote salesperson in a given state, since the payroll taxes and returns get done in the PEO's name, does this eliminate the client from having nexus in that state based on physical presence? No, no. The answer, the, if you're using a PEO, uh, it's not going to change the application of sales tax law in any given state. Um, we have another question, uh, a similar question from Colin. Do PEOs have sales tax liabilities in any state? If a client uses a PEO or not, their sales tax liabilities are going to remain the same um, you know, wherever they are. That's a good question. 